Hey everybody, this is the Big AG coming to you all the way from Augusta, Georgia. And I just wanted to go ahead and post another maybe 20, 30 minute long outdoor education video. Um, this one, like the last one, was, sorry, is going to be one about fishing, just about how I set up my tackle box and uh, the kind of equipment that I use. Um, I'm sorry that I haven't posted a video lately. It's just a lot has been going on with work. I work for a landscaping business and with a few, one of our, a few of our main contracts kind of closing stuff down, they also cut us out and, uh, well, we got a lot of catching up to do. But, uh, finally, I've been able to get a break. The company, uh, the whole company has finally been able to take a deep breath and go, and, uh, just keep going. <laughs> uh, and I am very, very grateful for the job that I have. Uh, going forward, I might post one, maybe two a week. That's a big maybe, depending on how much more we have to do. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to show you the tackle box and everything else that I use. So, where's... Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, apparently... Well, that just fell open. Apparently... I didn't have things set up well enough before I tried this. Let me see. Still doesn't. Oh, hooray. One of these deals. Okay. All right. Well, iPhone hasn't figured out how to do the uh, switch over to the front view camera instead of the selfie. All right. So. This right here is the Plano Guide Series Tackle Box. Let me get a good... Yeah, there we go. It's a Plano Series Tackle Box, and it's quite large. It's about, let's see, that's about 14, let's see now, 16 inches tall, about 18 inches wide, and 10 inches deep. That's a pretty big tackle box. That's a pretty big tackle box. Let's open this guy up. That was my bait caster. Come on, man. All right. Usually I like to find a stationary place to put my camera while I open these things. That's not going to work. Bear with me. I am nowhere near a professional cameraman, so please bear with me. In my tackle box, I have a Georgia license and South Carolina license. Very important if you live in the CSRA. That way, if you pull the shore on the wrong state <laughs> and DNR catches you, <laughs> you can say, hey, I've got a license for both states, so don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, I also have in the top a bait that I need to retire. This guy's been bitten and snagged and snatched and hooked in all manner of ways, shape, forms. And, uh, I think maybe the next time I use it, I'll have to retire it. It's got a nice little action there. Looks like a little green minnow. I've gotten a few, uh, bites from bluegills of Diamond Lakes of these things, just because they're such aggressive little fish. Then I have a lot of these guys. I have about seven frogs. I've got a black one. A black and yellow, a pumpkin seed, 
uh, blue and bronze. I've got a dark green, light green, and a uh, yellow one. All three of those have kind of like a camouflage pattern. Here's the light green. I don't really like the uh, light green that much because the bottom of it looks like a fire belly toad. And if the colors are too vivid, it'll make the fish afraid to bite it because they don't want to get poisoned. Uh, yeah. And usually in nature, bright colors stay, say, stay away from me. If you eat me, you'll die. Right. Now, I generally carry with me some 12-pound test string. Reason being is if it's over 12 pounds, I really don't want to catch it. And not many fish are over 12 pounds. Now, if I go catfishing, I'll probably have something around the... A uh, 20 pound mark, but I haven't been catfishing in forever. It's about the perfect. Uh, it's about the perfect size for bass. I've got two of these stainless steel hurricane uh, scrapers, and that's for scraping all the scales off the fish. Also got a ruler, that way when I'm fishing in the Georgia Lina area, I can immediately tell whether the fish is the proper length or not. It goes up to 12 inches. I had one that went up to 15 inches and I haven't been able to find it at all. And it's quite concerning, they don't make those anymore. I've got a nice little fillet knife, ergonomic hand grip. I think it's a Mora. Or a cutlery company. It's a very sharp blade. I'm trying not to cut myself as I put it back in the sheath. But yeah, it has a nice little sheath guard on it. I always carry a pen and a notebook just for recording purposes. If I want to, I can submit it to the DNR and show them they have a healthy ecosystem. Um, I really haven't been able to catch much this year. Yeah. And like I said, I always carry a backup one of these just in case a friend of mine and I go fishing and we both need to clean fish. Other than that, I normally carry a pocket knife on my person every day, so... Yeah, unless I'm going to Fort Gordon for a job, and then I just leave that at the house and use whatever tools we have available for opening bags and mulch and stuff like that. Moving on, I have four compartments. Uh, bear with me yet again. It's not helping at all. Okay, that's where the camera is, so I need to tilt it down. Okay, I've got four compartments. This compartment is active bait for this season. This is replacement bait. The second compartment is replacement bait. My third compartment is all the different kind of hardware that I need. And it's got treble hooks, bass hook, brim hook, all size of treble hooks. Just look at that. I think it's like three or four different sizes. Uh, I've used all my Texas rig hooks, which is great. I've got a few... Let's see, yeah, I've got a few of these, two of those left. I've got some bait changers, some barrel swivels, large and small, all matter of corks. I usually use this to just, oh, I normally use this uh, baby nail clipper just to make sure that I can snip any pieces of extra wire off. It's very helpful. A couple catfish hooks, 
brim hooks. I think I may have already said that bass hooks, definitely. And some drop shot lead and a lot of different other lead sinkers. As far as crankbaits, I had a nice size laser eye spinners spin bait. I also had a I'll say it was a, like a four, three or four inch uh, crankbait from Bass Pro. I lost that one in Clark Sill, both of those. I also lost one of my jumbo wacky worms, sorry, one of my uh, jumbo zoom worms in a creek that I was fishing. So, this is a vintage old retired sinker. Still has that nice little shine. It looks more like a shad now than a bass. So, I, it may still have its uses. I may need to go ahead and retire it. I have another vintage frog bait. Kind of nice. It's made so it's weighted to sit up on the top of the water like this. That way, when you pull, it'll go up. I have a crawdad. Red crawdad bait. These are good for little creeks and streams and stuff like that. Let's see if we can get the light. There we go. The light's bouncing off more of the red when I hold it like There we go. That's perfect. Perfect, perfect. Just like that. That's better. That's much better. It's better focus. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's the crawdad bait. You can see, like, the eyes right there, the claws coming to a point. It's like if you hooked a crawdad backwards through the um, thorax. Yeah. Not the thorax, but it's midsection. Arthropods don't have thorax. Well, yeah, they do. They have thoraxes, it's just joined to the head. Let me stop before I sound a little uneducated. Thank you. You're welcome. I sounded dad for so knowing Eli. Yeah. <laughs> Let me take a picture of this and see if I can get this out of your room. Okay. That lampshade thing? Yeah. I took the trash and recycling out. Can you also put in that air filter? Yeah, definitely. And then this is my last green bait. I like it. I like it a lot. Kind of has uh, like a shad and baby bluegill quality to it. It's more of a shad because of the silvery color. And then it has that like little red patch right there. Most of the time when I go fishing, I try to fish for bass or uh, brim, small pan fish, stuff like that. Now, as far as rods and reels go, it depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So, like, do I feel like taking out my bait caster and bird's nesting every two or three times I cast? Finally figured that out. It's the washing machine. And, and instead of casting it overhead, you're supposed to cast it to the side, or you're supposed to cast it um, in almost like a flipping manner. You want to flip it. You don't want to do a full force with this guy. It's made for like a medium range. 
It's like if you're in a boat and you want to cast into some reeds, which is why they're great for bass fishing. If you want to cast in, if you want to cast in some reeds, you can do that with this. If I want to do a live or crankbait scenario where I'm fishing in open water, I will either choose an open face or a spin cast style rod. Um, I normally trust Shakespeare, uh, but I have found, as far as um, fishing goes, and Bass Pro as well, but I have found that companies like Rhino make a equally decent um, open face casting reel. Now, this is the Shakespeare ugly stick. Uh, I think it's my mother's, <laughs> um, but it's okay. <laughs> and I have this little um, jig head on it. Don't know if you can see that, but let's see. There we go, jig head with a spoon. I'm trying to figure that, see if that'll work. Um, I usually use open face when I am trying to do a far shore cast or open water cast. And just to check and see where the fish are. We'll see what happens. I'm trying to get a group of buddies of mine together so we can go fishing. Um, maybe a couple of my brothers and brother-in-laws and uh, then some co-workers from work. I've got both a Georgia and Carolina fishing license now, South Carolina anyways, and uh, right, you know, I've been having a lot of fun uh, solo fishing, but sometimes it's just better to go in a group. Yep. And uh, that's pretty much everything. I went through that a lot faster. I need to catch some fish so that I can uh, get more ideas on what to say in a video like this. I kind of flew straight through that. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave it in the comments section. Um, please like, share, subscribe. And to my six subscribers on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, it is very much appreciated. Um, just spread the word that I am a halfway decent outdoors educator. And uh, I guess I'll... Yeah, what do I want to do now? Hmm. I really want to go fishing. But that's going to have to be saved for like 4 in the morning to 7 in the morning. Not a lot of places are open. I really want to fish from 4 to 10, either this weekend or not next weekend, until I can get some uh, affirmative, some uh, confirmations on whether people are going fishing with me or not. I think that'd be pretty good. All right. Well, I guess I've rambled on for about a minute or so, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, thank you for watching. And again, like, share, subscribe, and uh, stay outdoors. It's better than being inside. Stay safe.